All right, so in this example, 16.3, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the uh, change in pH of a solution if an acid or a base is added to it, and in this case, it's gonna be a base. Okay. Then we're gonna compare that to how the pH would change if you added that same amount of uh, base to a non-buffered solution, AKA, I think in this example, just pure water. All right, so let's see what we got here. We've got a one liter buffer solution. Contains 0.1 molar uh, HC2H3O2, that's uh, acetic acid, and 0.1 molar sodium acetate. So we see we have two, well, two moles there, but they're going to be solutions because what, 0.1 moles per liter. So we got a concentration uh, for, uh, we got a solution containing the weak acid and a weak base, aka buffer. So we know it's going to be a buffer. The value for the Ka is acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Since the initial amounts of the acid and the conjugate base are equal, the pH of the buffer is equal to pKa equals negative, one, negative log 1 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals 4.74. Jeez. Tro's doing a lot of our work for us these days. Look at that. He's calculating the pKa for us in the problem. Isn't that nice of him? All right, so let's calculate the new pH after adding 0, 0.0. 1, 0 moles of solid sodium hydroxide to the butter buffer. Com for comparison, calculate the pH after the uh, adding 0.01 moles of solid sodium hydroxide to the same amount of water. All right, so I'll add additional just calculation right at the end. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate the change in pH, how much the pH changed. So that's really what's important to see how well buffers work. Okay, let's draw a picture. That's usually a good starting point. Let's draw a picture. Let's draw our buffer. So we got a beaker. So it's one liter, so I don't know, that's a pretty big beaker. All right, it's, a, it's a sizable beaker, but nonetheless. All right, so we got acetic acid, HC2H3O2, and C2H3O2 minus. That's our uh, Buffer. Remember, the sodium is just going to be a spectator ion. Doesn't really do anything. The acetate is its conjugate weak base. All right, so that's all in solution. Then we're going to add some sodium hydroxide, which again, sodium is really going to be uh, a spectator ion, so that doesn't really change. All right, so we added hydroxide. So we're playing let's add base. Everybody's second favorite. Or no, let's add base is a little bit more popular. So that's usually first, let's add base. They're close. So we're playing let's add base. The hydroxide. What is hydroxide going to react with in that buffer? Is it going to react with the acetic acid or the acetate? Acetic acid. Why is it going to react with the acetic acid? Because it's an acid and that's a base. It's an acid and that's a base. So that's a neutralization reaction. The acid, if you're playing a base, let's have base, it's going to react with the acid present in the buffer. If you throw in the acid, it's going to react with the base present in the buffer. So, yep, it's going to react with acetic acid. You know what's really nice about this uh, tablet that I'm using now? Okay, for those of you who had to put up with me in Gen Chem 1, okay, for those of you who didn't have to put up with me in Gen Chem 1, don't you feel bad for those students that had to put up with me in Gen Chem 1 too? Oh, terrible. All right, so remember the videos I made for 1045? Did you watch those? You didn't watch any of those? They're award winning, except for the awards. Minus the awards, they're award winning <laughs> videos. Okay? Do you, anybody? Okay, you remember watching them? Okay. I don't know, I was using a tablet. I borrowed the tablet from our IT department. And it made so much noise, the pen on the screen. So when you're watching the videos, you can like hear me like tap in on the screen a lot. This one's really quiet. I like this one a lot better. <laughs> uh, IT, I did have to purchase it, but I got to pick this one. Last one, they were like, here. I'm like, well, thanks. But this one I got to pick it. All right. Okay, so what are going to be the products of hydroxide uh, reacting with acetic acid? 
C2H3O2 minus and water. So the base is going to, the hydroxide is going to accept that proton of, uh, off of acetic acid to make water, and then what's left is acetate. All right. <clears throat> That's the first thing we have to uh, figure out uh, what happens uh, when we're calculating the new pH after you add an acid or base to a buffer. You have to figure out what is reacting with the base or acid you add and then what's produced. Okay? Because really, the, the most of what we're trying to calculate is what the change is to the concentration of our weak acid and our weak base present in the buffer. Okay? So what's going to happen to the concentration of acetic acid when it neutralizes hydroxide? It's going to decrease, okay? What's going to happen to our concentration of acetate? It's going to increase, okay? So uh, acetic acid is going to go down, acetate is going to go up. Uh, that's uh, really uh, obviously um, stands out at us when we write down this equation. That's why I wanted to write it down. Now we need to figure out how much that acetic acid is going to go down and how much the acetate is going to go up. And first things first, is this a balanced chemical equation? Yeah, I see most people shaking their head. Yeah, it turns out this is. And when you're just talking about a neutralization reaction, when you're just accepting and donating one proton, they're always going to be balanced if you, of course, write out the products correctly. Uh, so yeah, it's, this is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio, straight across the board. So for every one mole of hydroxide we add, acetic acid is going to go down by that much. For every one mole of hydroxide we add, acetate is going to go up by that amount. And in this problem, we added, what did we add? 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide. All right. So I'll write it out uh, you know, here first, but pretty much since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, you're going to see this is going to be a pretty easy calculation. <coughs> so 0.010 moles of hydroxide. For every one mole of hydroxide, uh, one mole of acetic acid, hmm, hmm. will be neutralized. And so that's going to give us 0 0.010 moles. And that's being neutralized, so this is how much it's going to go down by. It's going to go down by that much. Now let's figure out how much uh, the... Nope, I already used red. Let's see, figure out how much uh, the acetate is going to go up by. And since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's going to be the same number, but I'll just write out all the work, just so we're realizing where these numbers are come from, coming from. So I added 0.01 moles of hydroxide. And then for this one, for every one mole of hydroxide, uh, I'm going to produce one mole of acetate. And that's going to go up by that amount. So now let's try to figure out how much we have after of each of those uh, chemicals, after, after each of the, the acid and base, how much we have at left after that happens. After we use up 0.01 moles of the acetic acid and we make 0.01 moles of the acetate. Well, turns out that we started with 0.1 moles of each, so all we're gonna have to do is subtract or add that from that. So real nice and easy. Okay, so we, had, we started out with 0.1 moles of acetic acid. And we're using up 0.01 moles 
to neutralize it. So what's that? 0 0.090 moles of acetic acid. And let's figure out how much uh, sodium acetate or is really just acetate we have. That's what we're worried, we're worried about after we produce that amount. So we started out with 0.1. And we're going to add 0 0.010 moles. because that's going to be produced after hydroxide neutralizes that uh, acetic acid. And so now we have 0 0.110 moles of C2H3O2 minus. And yes, I did that in my head. Actually, no, I just remember that from last time we did it. Okay, so now we know how much acid and base we have left. So now we can calculate the pH after we tossed in that hydroxide. How do we calculate the pH of a buffer again? Perfect. pH equals pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation comes back to save the day. pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the acid. And so the pH is going to be pKa. Oh, look at that. Tro calculated that for us. 4.74, so nice of him, such a, such a good guy. 4.74 plus the log, which one's my base, acetate or acetic acid? Acetate, acetate? are you sure it's not acetic acid? No, positive. positive, okay. Just check it. So that is now 0. Point one one zero moles over zero point zero nine zero moles. Yes, sir. Oh, answer? Sure. Four point eight three. Four point eight three? Four point eight three. Do we like that? Should we highlight it? No, okay. I tried. All right, so that is the pH after we added the hydroxide. All right, so that's all well and good. But in the next part, when we, uh, for comparison, when we calculate the pH after adding 0.01 moles of solid sodium hydroxide to one liter of water, better comparison would be to see how much the pH changed. Okay, that's a better comparison. Not just the ending pH, but how much it changed, okay? So uh, just, you know, any change, if I calculate the uh, change in pH, I'm going to talk about my pH final minus my pH initial, right? Good old final minus initial. <coughs> my, final, my final pH is right now is 4.83. That's what it turned out to be after you added the hydroxide. So 4.83 minus my initial. And since, as uh, True points out, since the initial amounts of the acid and the base are equal, the pH equals the pKa. So 4.74 is also my initial pH. Again, thank you, True. So minus 4.74. I don't know if I'm as nice as Tro. Uh, on a problem like this, probably just because this is, uh, you got a lot of calculating to do. Plus you're probably running out of space. Like, I don't have enough space to calculate that. So sure. Just for you guys though. And, well. So I'm not gonna make very good friends after 
future students will watch this video, and then they have to calculate it. Edit that part out. Yeah, edit that. Okay, good. <laughs> What's that? What do we get? Zero point zero nine. All right. So, and that's plus. So it went up by 0 0.09. Okay, which isn't surprising. Went up. We added some hydroxide base. All right. So let's do the next part of this. Uh, Problem. So for comparison, calculate the pH after adding 0.01 moles of solid sodium hydroxide. So the same amount of sodium hydroxide to just one liter of water. So that would be the non buffer solution. Look at that. I didn't have room, so I knew I was going to need this. All right, so let's draw a picture. It's always fun to start off by drawing a picture. Draw another beaker. This time we have one liter of just water, so not a buffer. And we're going to add the same amount of sodium hydroxide into that one liter of water. <coughs> All right, if we're going to calculate the change in pH, we're going to have to calculate the final pH. So what's the pH going to be after we add that? How are we going to calculate the pH of this solution that we're making? Um, yeah, so the water is 7, so that would be my initial pH. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to be my initial. What's how are we going to calculate the final pH? We just added 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide to 1 liter of water. So whenever we're trying to calculate the pH, we're going to talk, what is the pH of the solution? All right. First thing you got to think about is what type of solution do I have? What do I have? A basic. OK. What, what type of base? A strong base. I have a strong base. So that's what I have. So what do we calculate when we have a strong base solution? pOH, right? So we're going to calculate the pOH. And that, of course, is pH equals negative log of the hydroxide. But as soon as I said this equation, I reminded uh, myself of something we need to check okay, on this problem. Down here, the henderson hasselbalch equation is pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And what do those brackets mean? Concentration. Concentration. What do we use? Moles. moles. Mm -hmm. Is moles the same thing as concentration? No. Rot row. Did we, did we mess up? Should we, should we have calculated concentration? But 0.01. So that, that's a one good point, Christian, thank you. So it's one liter solution, so if we divide both of those by one liter, we're going to get the same number. Okay, so we're saved there. But it turns out we don't even have to worry about that. No matter what this volume is, because it's a ratio, whatever you divide the top by, you're going to have to divide the bottom by, so it's going to be the same uh, change, and the units cancel out. So we can use anything there. We don't have to use concentration. We can use moles there. You can use millimoles if you want. Okay, so that, that gets us out of that predicament. But for this one, since it's just the hydroxide concentration, we would have to calculate it. But as Christian pointed out, it's uh, one liter, so that's going to be pretty easy. Okay, so 0.01 divided by 1, 0.01. Once again, did that in my head. Negative log of 0.01 molar. And that's not the pH, is it? That's the pOH. Two? I'll go through, I'll go 2.0. So our pOH is 0.0, 2.0. 
2.0. How we're going to calculate our pH. pH equals 14 minus the PAOH. Good. All right, so this is just a strong base solution, so we're going to follow that same game plan that we uh, developed earlier. So 14 minus 2.0. I've been doing most of the calculations so far today. You guys got to do something. 12.0, thank you. Can't carry you like this. My back, my back. All right, so we got a pH of 12.0 now. But again, to compare it to what happened with the buffer, we should calculate the change in pH. So final minus initial, I know it's now 12.0. What was it before? What was the pH of the water before we added that hydroxide? 4.74, that was the buffer. Yeah, just seven. So we got just water. So that's a neutral solution. So that would be seven, right? So 12 minus, I got this one. 12 minus seven, 5.0. So that's my change in pH for adding hydroxide to water. Went up by five units. What was my, uh, so versus, what was my uh, pH change for the buffer solution? 0 0.09, is that what it was? All right, so this is where you are going to become a buffer fan if you're not already a fan of buffers. All right, that's how well buffers work. So we added the same amount of sodium hydroxide to both a buffered solution and a neutral solution or a non-buffer solution, just pure water. Um, the buffer solution caused, uh, allowed the pH to only go up by 0.09. All right. The non-buffer solution, the water, the pH up went up by 5.0. Doesn't that impress you? Perhaps blow your mind how well that works? All right, I can tell from your faces you're not that impressed. Ever. Like never. <laughs> I keep trying. But here, I'm gonna do it now. All right, so think about the what so. As I said previously, buffers are very important. A lot of uh, different chemical processes, including a lot of biochemistry. So uh, most of your body, uh, areas of your body are, P are buffered to very specific pH ranges so that proteins can work properly, enzymes can work properly. Like your blood is uh, buffered to about 7.4, okay? Uh, now, I don't know exactly what would happen. Um, I'm not a physician. So consult your doctor. But if your pH went up by 0.09, I don't think much would happen. Again, not a physician. Okay, you might have some type of symptoms from that, but I actually think you probably not, wouldn't even notice. Okay, 0.09, all right? Probably wouldn't even notice. Like, we'll see you in lab. You're not getting out of lab if your pH changes by <laughs> 0.09, okay? If your pH changed, the pH of your blood changed by 5, yeah, we're not going to see you in your lab. You're going to get out of lab. You're going to get out of the rest of the lab. You're, you're headed to the lab in the sky <laughs> to do titrations for the rest of the day. Yeah, pH of 5 would definitely just, I, I don't, again, not if you don't know exactly what happened. I don't think you're making it. Okay. Yeah, you're not, you're not making it. I mean, that is a huge change in pH. Okay, um, just lots of bad things would happen. Okay, and so that is why buffers are so important. Okay, they really do heavily regulate pH. And so that's really important, a lot of medicine and biochemistry. All right, so now I know I impressed you. Okay. I can. I even did that pretty good. When I use the mouse, it's a lot better. When I try to get cool and swipe, that's where I run into trouble. All right, so that's playing Let's Add Bass. What would this problem look like if we're playing let's add acid? Okay, and actually not much different. Okay, the only difference would be that if you're adding the acid, what's it going to react with? Is it going to react with acetic acid or acetate? Acetate. Acetate, and then it would produce the acetic acid. 
So essentially, uh, they would go up and down by the same amount, but instead of acetic acid going down, it would be the acetate going down by that amount because it's neutralizing the acid. And acetic acid, its conjugate, would go up by that amount. And so that is illustrated on this side. In the middle, you have your buffer. If you add the hydroxide, you go to the right. Your acid is going to go down by that amount. And so you'd subtract off that amount, however much base you added. Your conjugate base is going to go up by that amount. And so you would just add that amount to however much you started with. And that's what we just did. If we added acid instead, just the opposite. The base would go down by that amount. So you'd subtract off that amount from the concentration of the base. And the conjugate acid would go up by that same amount. Okay. And since we'd use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, the, the ratios would just flip. Okay. Instead of this, the final equation here down here in blue would be 4.74 plus the log of 0.09 on top, 0.11 on the bottom. So instead of this going up by 0.09, because it was a base and it's going to go up, it would just go down by 0.09. So you'd be subtracting off 0.09. So 4.74 minus 0.09, what's that, 0 0.65? 4.65? I did that in my head, but now I'm nervous. I've been getting cocky. Okay. 4.65. Right. So that's the only thing that would be different if you played let's add acid. Okay. Just the reverse uh, in the reaction would happen because the base would go down to neutralize the acid. 